Hello everybody, today I am going to be talking to you about my experience <laughs> taking a week off of social media. Um, I tried to read more and it really worked. <laughs> Before I dive in, I would actually like to talk about social media right now and specifically the Black Lives Matter movement and specifically what we can all be doing. So down in my description, I am going to link to a, a resource you can use to see what you can do to help the Black Lives Matter movement. Whether you have money to donate or not, there is absolutely things that you can be doing. So please click the link down in the description. To make real change, we need everyone on board. And so I really encourage you to click that link. I'm also going to be linking to some creators, both old friends of mine and new YouTube channels that I have found of Black booktubers. We need to be making change in our own communities. And one of the things that I can do with my platform as a non-Black creator is to highlight Black voices. And so I really hope that you will click on those channels and go and subscribe so that you can diversify your subscription box and learn to respect, love people who are not white. <laughs> My biggest fear with this moment is that it will be only a moment, right? The news cycle comes in waves. Once reporters get bored of reporting about the Black Lives Matter movement, we will move on to something else and that will not allow for change. So I want to encourage you to make changes in your lives that will continue this movement forward. Things that I'm doing are reading a lot of the books that I've had on my shelves for years by black authors. I am trying to support local industries um, and shops that are run by black owners. I am supporting my black creator friends. I am making sure that when I have opportunities to lift up other voices that I am making sure those voices are diverse. So those are just a few things, but I'll also link to a thing down below that can, like I mentioned, show you ways to help. I really hope and trust that you will click on those links down below. Let's now jump into talking about social media and reading. I have always loved books. I have stories from my parents telling me that I, when I was a toddler, I would like excitedly read books and stuff. But for me, I know that the year when I was 13, that's when my reading life really exploded. It was the year that I read Twilight for the first time, Harry Potter for the first time. It's when I first found young adult fiction and got so excited about reading young adult books. It was that year that I sort of like started to read nonstop and it became my most important valued favorite hobby. Throughout high school, I would read a lot and at the end of high school in grade 11, I was really sad that I had no one to talk to about books at my school. Like reading was nerdy and I didn't have many friends who were just spending all of their time reading. There probably was, we were just scared to talk to one another. And so I started a YouTube channel. I started this channel so that I could talk to other people about reading. What I didn't know I was doing was completely changing my reading life. Now, I, believe that this would have happened regardless because yes, I did start a, a booktube channel, but I also got a smartphone. Uh, when I was 20, I think when I got my first smartphone, right? Either 19 or 20, I got my first smartphone throughout high school and my undergrad is when YouTube and Facebook and Twitter were really exploding. Um, and so that change would have happened inevitably, even if I hadn't been a creator on the platform, but it really did change. Like the amount of plugged inness was a lot because I was constantly watching videos from my other book friends who were making book videos. And I was learning about books I never would have learned about otherwise, which again, is why it is so important that you are subscribed to a diverse list of booktubers because books that one sector of readers are reading will never come up for other sectors of readers. Like it's, it's in that diversity of different types of voices and different types of readers that you really learn about different types of books. Regardless, 
I learned about different titles. I learned about different ways of buying books. Like I had never bought books online. <laughs> that, that to me was not a thing. I would go to chapters to buy books. That was how I bought books. I learned about how the industry works. I learned about how important it is to support independent bookshops. And as my channel grew, it also became performative a little bit. Kind of like, I have to show up and film a video. I better have read a lot. And for a couple of years, I really did. And then in 2015, everything changed. <laughs> you can, if you go to my Goodreads, you can see like, you know, the reading challenge. I, every year before 2015, I read like 50 books, 52 books, 54 books. And that was like the trend for me throughout high school too. And then in 2015, I goddamn fell in love, but I also <laughs> studied abroad and I was in England and Europe for six months. I had my first ever real relationship and I just wasn't reading as much. Um, but then, and this is, this is the crucial moment. I lost the habit. I lost the habit of reading a lot instead of being like, oh yeah, I have 10 minutes. What should I do? I'll read. The habit became, I have 10 minutes. What will I do? I'll scroll. And that completely ruined my reading. There's other factors. You know, I did a master's program. I became an adult that had a job and my time was being put in different places. But I know that social media really took a lot of the time I used to spend reading. And so last week I challenged myself to not go on social media. That was the main part of the challenge. It was to not go on social media. But I decided, well, if I'm not gonna be going on social media, I'm still gonna have blank parts of my day where I'm waiting for something or I'm bored, etc. What can I do in those moments? And I thought, well, what if I just tried to read every time that I went, try, like I tried to go on social media. So I deleted all the social media apps off of my phone and I put the library app, which I use to listen to audiobooks and the Audible app where I've already purchased a lot of audiobooks um, in the past, very prominently displayed on my phone screen where the social media apps I used to automatically click on were. And guys, what happened was a, I was gonna say a miracle, but it's not a miracle at all. Number one, I would often pick up my phone and just kind of look and be like, oh, there's nothing to do here. And I'd put it down and I would then do something that I cared about more. I would either work because I'd be like, you know what? I would like to be productive right now. Or I'd have a conversation with someone or I would play Animal Crossing <laughs> or I would read. So automatically, I just felt that my time was going to much more valuable activities. Secondly, though, I read so much more than I usually do. So I'm already having a very good reading year. I've, we're about halfway through the year and I've read about 26 books. So it's, things are, things are on the up. But last week, I almost read four entire books. <laughs> I finished three and I got like halfway through a fourth. I listened to two entire audiobooks, I read an entire novel, and I got, like I said, about halfway through another novel. I never anymore read that much in one week. And it was completely made possible by the redirecting of my attention. I'm saddened by this. I'm not surprised by this, but I want to learn from this. Social media can be a really important tool but it can also be a really negative part of our lives for a lot of different reasons. One of them, and this has been proven by studies, and I'll, you know what, hell, I'll link to some of those studies down below. It is really bad for our mental health to constantly be comparing ourselves to other people. It's really, really bad. And that is what you mainly do when you're scrolling through Instagram and when you're scrolling through Twitter. We are not accurate depictions of ourselves online. We, our, our relationships online are often very, very surface level. I am in no way saying that you don't make real friends online because that's shit. <laughs> I have made some of the most important friendships and relationships of my life through the internet. But I met them through the internet and then I talked to them not only by like liking their posts on Instagram. Um, one of my best friends is now one of my best friends. We both met through booktube and we text every single day, not message each other through Instagram. We text, we have real conversations. So yes, you can find friends online 
for sure. Yes, it's also like, it is a valuable tool. Look at what it's done for the Me Too movement. Look at what it's doing for Black Lives Matter. It can be instrumental to important change. However, it's also really bad for you. It heightens suicide rates. It heightens depression rates. Again, I'll link to st science down below. I'm not making anything up. It can be really, really bad for you if you are on it all of the time, especially for young people. It scares me how bad it is for young people. And don't think I don't think about it all the time as a person who makes their living off of the internet. I worry about it a lot. And the only way I justify it is because the entire message of my channel is get off of the internet and read a book. Like, <laughs> thank goodness that the thing I'm promoting and talking about reading encourages you to go offline. So the books that I read, two of them were inspired by me taking a week off of social media. The first was How to Do Nothing by Jenny O'Dell. I really enjoyed this book. I give it like between a three and a four stars. I think that it went on too many tangents and a lot of those tangents I really enjoyed. I think that a lot of people wouldn't enjoy them. She's like, this reminds me of this performance art piece. And then she just starts talking about it for 10 minutes. Like I said, I listened to the audiobook. For me, most of the time, that was great. I was like, I'd love to hear about this performance art piece, but I know a lot of people would get really bored of that and would be frustrated that she's constantly going off topic. But if you are into more of a sprawling, tangent filled book, I recommend it. It was, the subtitle is Resisting the Attention Economy and it is about this <laughs> conversation. It's about what social media does to our personalities, to our lives, to our perceptions of ourselves, not just social media, but like the idea that we're constantly supposed to be productive and that our hobbies are supposed to be um, financially validated and stuff. I learned a lot from the book and I really enjoyed listening to it. So I do recommend it. Um, maybe just like listen to a sample of it first. Then I read slash listened to um, Uncanny Valley by Anna Wiener. The first like 30% of this book, I loved. I was like, this is four stars, like 100%. And then it just, in my opinion, became super repetitive and lost its wheels a little bit. I think it didn't really know where it was going, but I still learned a lot. The book is a memoir about a woman who worked in publishing in New York City. Um, and I especially really loved the moments right at the beginning. And I wish the whole book had been more about this. So clearly I just need to look about for a book about the publishing industry in New York. But it's about a woman who then hears about the tech industry and specifically at the beginning about a tech startup who is starting an ebook app. And she kind of thinks, heck, I'll try that out. And so she applies for a job there, is hired, and it starts her journey into the tech industry. She ends up moving to San Francisco, working for GitHub in Silicon Valley. Um, she does talk about important things like the absolute lack of diversity in the tech industry, how few women are encouraged to work in the tech industry um, and work in it. Like she was one of the few women at her different companies that she worked at. But like I mentioned, the, the second half, or really honestly, the 75% of the book I found was just going in circles. It wasn't very um, grabbing. And in the end, I give it more like just like a three stars. But from both of those books, I really did learn about how social media is trying to hack our brains all of the time, how um, they don't, ha it doesn't have our best interest at heart. You know, Instagram makes their app as addictive as possible, not because it makes you happy, but because it makes you watch more ads. Why do these things like constantly ask you to refresh, like pull the refresh, pull the refresh, or the way like it is so engineered the way that they show us notifications so that you're constantly refreshing your feed and checking your notifications and basically creating fake notifications and being like someone who you follow follows someone else and that random person that you don't care about retweeted something that you don't care about and you're suddenly like, oh, I better refresh. It's insane. <laughs> And the thing that is more in how to do nothing, but also just I learned from this week offline is how much 
more I can learn being offline than being constantly plugged online. Like the, I read, like I mentioned, basically four books that week. And those books taught me way more than randomly scrolling through aesthetic photos. <laughs> like, and I'm not saying that I hate Instagram because I don't. I enjoy Instagram. I like taking photos. I like posting about books. I like posting about my life. I like reading about my friends' lives and seeing photos about like their life events. I I'm not saying it's all bad, but I am saying that I read a lot of valuable stuff. The other book that I read was The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, which I will mention has is dated. It shows that it was written in the 60s. There are some really insensitively uh, phrased racist sentences but the stuff about mental health in that book and feminism in that book is outstanding some of it was it's become one of my favorite books it was i literally read one of my new favorite books because i wasn't spending time on social media um and the other book was writers and lovers i started by um lily king i'm really enjoying it so far i can't really say what i think because i'm like only halfway through but i'm really enjoying it so far in conclusion <laughs> I need to spend less time on social media. Reading means a lot to me. Reading to me means escape. It means education. It means growing. It means becoming a better person. Those things are all things that I value so much. I am happier when I spend more of my time reading. I feel like I'm engaging in the community that I love and supporting artists and supporting authors when I read. I feel like I'm in the world that I care about the most when I read. I don't feel that way when I'm on Instagram or scrolling through Twitter. And I'm not about to like delete all my profiles and go off the grid, partly because this is my income and I need to feed myself. And I do truly believe that a lot of good comes from the internet, but it's in moderation and it's in balance. So I'd love to hear if you've ever taken a week off of social media or a month or any time whatsoever. Honestly, this was the first time I've ever done it, which kind of freaks me out. You know, I'm 25 and this was the first time I ever thought, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to actually try and just not go online and see how that affects me. I really encourage you to do it. I I'm thinking about other ways to maybe carry this through, like maybe no social media after 6 p.m. or no social media until noon, because it's such a, it can be such a stressful way to wake up. I'd also love to hear if you have any book recommendations about this kind of topic. Like I mentioned Uncanny Valley and How to Do Nothing, it could be nonfiction about the social internet or about technology, that books like that that you really liked, or non -fic or fiction <laughs> about characters who maybe try and go off the grid or like try and not go on the internet, I don't know. I'm not sure what that could be, but if you have it, I would love to hear it. <laughs> okay, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I really encourage you to please check out those links that I mentioned down in my description and I will see you guys in my next video.